In this video, 22, we're going to be working with fractions. Now, you've been working with fractions for some time now, since probably uh, fifth grade. And we're just going to review some of those basic concepts so that when we get to our next video, video 23, um, we're going to be using some of these concepts when we will be adding to track fractions with negatives. So let's go ahead and get started. Take out your homework assignment. Because video 22, working with fractions, it looks like this sheet here. Okay, and let's get started with our first question. First off, why do we need to um, find the least common multiple? Right, oftentimes referred to as the least common denominator at LCM. Why do we have to find that with the fractions? Well, we use this to, these common denominators to um, add and subtract on a like fractions. We have to come up with a denominator, which is the bottom of the fraction, so that they're the same, so that they, the pieces match and that they can um, be added or subtracted. Okay, let's go ahead and fill that in. So the reason why we're going to do this. And let's look at number one. We want to find the LCM of 8 and 12. So let's go ahead and do that. We're looking at multiples. So we take 8 and we list the multiples of 8. Okay, and then we take 12 and list the multiples of 12. Well, the first multiple, 8 times 1 is 8. Okay, and then the second multiple, 8 times 2 is 16. And the third multiple, 8 times 3 is 24. Okay, and the, the fourth multiple would be 32. And the fifth multiple would be 4. So let's just stop here. I think we um, see a common multiple already. Let's list the ones for 12. We have 12 and we have 24. When we match, when the numbers match, for instance, the 24 here and the 24 here, we call that the LCM. So the LCM of 8 and 12 is equal to 24. Okay. So what that means is that if we were taking two fractions, say 1 8 plus 3 12, what we need to do is change these denominators into 12, or excuse me, 24. So we would take 1 8 and make it equal to a fraction with 24 in the bottom. Well, we take 8 times 3 to get 24, so our common fraction would be 3 24. And then we would add it to 3 12. Well, we'd have to change that denominator into 24, which is equal to times 2 here, 12 times 2, and then 3 times 2 is 6. Okay, so now that we have common denominators, then we can add. And that's what we're going to look at in our next video. So that's the kind of the reasoning here. We want to have the same size pieces. Because if we don't, if they're on a like fractions, like the 8, the 1 8, and the 3 12, we can't add them. Right. So let's look here at number 2. Find the LCM of negative 4 and 9. Well, ne the negative doesn't change anything for the LCM. We're still going to list the same multiples. We can even look at it as a positive number, as the 4 and 9. Okay, it doesn't change anything here. Um, they share the same multiples, whether they're positive or negative, whether both are positive, whether they're negative one or positive or one is negative. So they share the same um, multiples. Okay, so we got four, and then four times two is eight, four times three is twelve, four times four is sixteen, four times five is twenty. 4 times 6 is 24, and 4 times 7 is 28, 4 times 8 is 32, and 4 times 9 is 36. I know 36 is 1 because I multiplied the 2 together to get 36, and I don't know if there's one that happens before that, okay? We could always just take 4 times 9 to get 36, but a lot of times that's the key here is to find the one that is the least. Okay, if we know that that would be a common multiple. So let's see if that's the least one. Well, we have 9, 
we had 18, we had 27, and then we have 36. So yes, 36 is the smallest one that they both show. So the LCM here is equal to 36. Okay. I caution you on just taking the first number and multiplying by the second number to get 36. It works sometimes, but not all the time. Okay. It will give you a common multiple, but it won't always give you the least common multiple. Here it works. Okay, let's take a look at number three. We're going to convert from mixed numbers to improper fractions. Okay. To do this, we're going to take our whole number, which is 4, and multiply it by our denominator, which is 5. So we multiply there. That gives us 20. Okay. And then what we're going to do is add the three pieces. So we got 20 pieces already. And we're going to add the three that are already up here. So plus 3 gives us 23 pieces. And the size of the pieces are this. Okay, so this is 23 this is the improper fraction. Okay, so 4 and 3 fifths is equal to 23 fifths. We just converted the mixed number here into an improper fraction. Let's do that again here in number 4. We're going to convert negative 3 and 3 sevenths. The negative sign does not change how we do anything here. Okay? What it's going to do is that our answer is just going to be a negative. Now, Okay, so we do the same thing. We take the, the whole number out front times our denominator. So 3 times 7 is 21. And then we add our pieces here, which is 3. So we're going to add those 3. So that gives us a total of 24 pieces over 7 to keep the same denominator. Okay. Now it's negative. Well, that negative can go in the numerator or in the denominator. Remember. Negative 24 over 7 is equal to 24 over negative 7. So that negative can go in the numerator or the denominator. Okay. Number 5. We're going to now convert the other way. We're going to convert from an improper fraction to a mixed number. And that's going to take a little bit of division here. So we're going to have to divide. What we think about is how many groups of 5 can go into 16. Okay. Well, 5 times 2 is 10. We'll try to get another group. 5 times 3 is 15. So it looks like we can get 3 groups of 5. Okay. Well, 3 groups of 5 is 15. We take 16 and take away 15. We're left with 1. Okay. Okay. So this improper fraction changes to 3 and 1 fifth. Okay. What it looks like here, if I will do it with division, I'm taking 5 into 16. Well, 5 goes into 16 three times. Subtract 15, we get 1. And then we're just taking this, what we used to call a remainder, and putting it over our divisor. So it's 1 fifth. Okay, so you can do them kind of mentally like I did in the first one, or you can just work them out and use um, your division skill. Okay, let's take a look here at number 6. We'll do this one both ways. Again, we have a negative, but it does not change the way that we work with the fraction. And what we're thinking of is how many groups of 7 can go into 26? Well, we know that 7 times 3 is 21, but 7 times 4 is 28. So 4 is too many, 21, we're going to have some left over. So it's, we can go into 3 times, let me rewrite that, 3. We can go in, yeah, 3 times. And then 3 times 7 is 21. If we take 21 pieces from 26, we're going to have 5 left over. So it's going to be 3 and 5, 7. And this is how it looks like. Okay, so then we just need to put, make it negative because the whole thing is negative. Okay, and this is what it looks like through division. We're going to do 7 going into 26. Okay. And then to take care of the negative sign, we're just going to put it out here in front of our answer. Well, 7 goes into 26 three times. It's so take away 21. We get five pieces. And then remember, we put the remainder here over the divisor. 
that's going to be three and five seconds. Okay, and let's take a look here at um, the greatest common factor. Now, these are two concepts that are um, mixed up. Okay, the GCF and LCM. Remember, LCM is used to add, come up with a common denominator so we can add and subtract. GCF is used to um, reduce fractions, to write fractions in the simplest form. Right? So they, the GCF is used to reduce fractions. And we're looking at factors, not multiples. Multiples, think of multiplication. Factors, we're looking at numbers that we, that we can um, multiply together. Okay? Those are the separate, are called factors. So let's go ahead and just do a couple here. I'll be explain. So to find the GCF, we take our number and we're going to use a what I call a factor T. Okay. Now, one factor of all numbers is the number one. One times what gives you twelve? Well, one times twelve. So those are two factors. And then I just go in counting order. I say, well, is two a factor of twelve? Can I multiply two by anything to get twelve? Yes, I can multiply it by 6, so 2 and 6 are factors. And then I go to 3. 3 times what gives me 12? Well, 4. Okay. And then I go to 4, and I say 4 times what? Well, 4 and 3. And I'm starting to, I'm going to start repeating myself. When I start repeating myself, I'm, I'm just relisting the factors on, um, on the other side of the factor T. Okay, so my factors of 12 all of them are 1, 12, 2, 6, 3, 4. And I do the same thing for 32. I list the factors of 32, which are start with your number 1, 1 times what? 32. And then we try 2. 2 times what? Well, 2 goes into 32. You might have to do some division here. 2 goes into 32 once. Subtract 2, we get 12. So it's 16. Okay, we don't want to miss any of the factors. If we miss a factor, then there's a good chance that we're not going to get the GCF right. Okay, and then we try 3. Well, let's see if 3 can go into 32. Well, 3 goes into 3 1. Get 0. So no, 3 will not work. So we don't write that down. We know 4, 4 times 8. And we go to 5. 5, no. Because that's going to be a 0 or 5 to be a factor of 5. Okay, so then we go to 6. 6 times what? 6 times 6 is 36, and 6 times 5 is 30, so 6 is not. Okay, and then we go to 7. 7 times 4 is 28, and 7 times 5 is 35, so no. And then we go to 8, and 8 and 4. Okay, when we start to repeat like we did here, 8 and 4, then we know we're done. So our factors are 1, 2, 4. 32, 16, 8. Okay, and you can put them in the order real easy. Let me show you how to do that. If you do the factor T, you go down this side and you go up this side. And now put your factors in order. Okay, now what we're going to do is just talk about common factors. Okay, I'm going to circle the common factors, the numbers that they share in common. 1 is a common factor. 1 is a common factor of all numbers. 2 is a common factor. Okay. And then we have 4 as a common factor. Now, okay, and those are the um, three common factors. And okay, not all numbers share three common factors. Some numbers only share one as a common factor. Okay? But which number, 1, 2, or 4, is the largest? Well, the largest number is 4. So we call the GCF the greatest common factor. The GCF is equal to 4. So that is your answer for number 7. Okay, and let's look here at number 8. Find the GCF of 15 and 21. Now we do the same thing. We do our factor feet. Okay, we do the multiple of the factors of 15. There I go. Confusion. 1 and 15, and then we try 2. Well, we know 2 isn't, but 3 is. 3 and 5. And we try 4. 4 isn't, but 5 and 3 are. Okay, so I'm done. I start repeating, I, I'm done. And then I try 21. Well, it's 1 and 21. I try 2. 2 is not. 
then I go to 3, 3 and 7. Then I circle my common multiples. We got 1 and 3. So which one is the greatest? The greatest is 3. So the GCF is equal to 3. Okay, and that's our answer for number 8. Okay. And now number 9. Write the fraction in simplest form. What we're going to do is use our GCF to write these fractions in simplest form. Okay, so what we have to do is find the GCF between 18 and 27. Okay, so we do our factor T's of 18 and a factor T for 27. We use 1 and 18, 2 and 9, and then 3 and 6. 4, nope. 4 times 4 is 16, so no. And then we try 5. 5, no. So we start repeating at 6. Then we do 27. 1 and 27. 2 is not, but 3 and 9. And then we try 4. 4 is not, 5 isn't, 6 isn't, 7 isn't, and 8 isn't. And then we start at 9. So now we can see that the greatest common factor that those numbers share is 9. But what we do with this 9, we're going to divide both the numerator and the denominator by 9 to reduce the fraction. So, it, so we know that 18 divided by 9 is going to give us a whole number. Okay? And 27 divided by 9 is going to give us a whole number of 3. So this fraction, 18 27, can reduce into its simplest form to 2 thirds. And then let's look here at our last problem for this video. Okay, we're going to write the fraction in simplest form. Okay, now we uh, it's a mixed number. Okay, we just need to write the fraction in simplest form, so we can ignore the whole number. So we're just going to look at six and fifteen. Okay, six. What is that? Not writing very neatly. So we got six. And we got 15. And we got to do our factor t's for both of those numbers. Well, 6 is 1 and 6, 2 and 3. And then we got to try 3, we're done. Okay? Now, 15, 15, 1 and 15, 2, no, 3 and 5. Okay? So now look at the two lists. And we can see that they share 3 here and 3 here. We know that they always share one, okay? But one's never going to help us because we can't. If we divide by one, it's not. It's just going to be the same number, okay? So we're looking for three. So if we divide by three, the numerator by three and the denominator by three, we would simplify down to two, and down here to three. That would simplify to two thirds. So our mixed number in simplest form. We can't forget about the seven. It could be seven and Okay, so that's just some basics um, review of working with fractions. Okay. Now, um, if you have any questions, please make sure you write those down, bring those to class. Okay, thank you for doing your homework tonight. Take care.